Guess what? I I got Herman Hesse Siddhartha. This was a, a very popular book in the 60s. It was actually written in the what? I think in 1922. Let's see. Yes. Exploring the Oriental religious concepts that became central to his work, Herman Hesse wrote Siddhartha in 1922, translated into English in 1951, which recounts the spiritual evolution of a man living in India at the time of Buddha. Perhaps more than any, perhaps more than any other of his novels, Siddhartha, Siddhartha reflects reflects Hesse's belief that Siddhartha reflects reflects Hesse's belief that the true profession of a man is to find his way himself. For me, Siddhartha is a more potent medicine than the New Testament, said Henry Miller. Kurt Vonnegut Jr. deemed it Hesse's simplest, clearest, most innocent tale of seeking and finding. Hesse again utilized the tools of psychoanalysis in their Steppenwolf, 1927, translated as Steppenwolf in 1929, a, a novel that probes the two souls of a reclusive intellectual whose animalistic urges strive for release. Inspired by the dissolute aftermath of Hesse's failed second marriage to a much younger woman, woman it is arguably his most autobiographical book. One hailed by the New York Times as a savage indictment of bourgeois society. Uh, this is the intro of book Siddhartha talks about his life and what other things he did. Other books he wrote. Okay, so let's, now let's go to the introduction by Tom Robbins. Hmm. Let's see how far I can get. Dostoevsky is credit, credited with having invented the psychological novel. Although considering the millions of pages of tediously internalized angst-ridden prose that have fluttered in on the Russian's long, dark coattails, fiction that has been both a crime and a punishment, may be accused of rather than credited with is the more appropriate phrase. The problem for writers and readers alike with all this inward gazing is how few of us ever gaze in far enough to justify the strain. To reap lasting rewards, to escape the briar patch of perpetrated trauma, the gazer must delve beneath the ego level, the personality level, the level of genetic predisposition and environmental conditioning must penetrate more deeply even than the archetypal underworld. One of the very rare Western authors, not only to plumb those arcane depths, but to do so in a narratively entertaining, stylistically engaging fashion, thereby making Dostoevsky's overheated lemons into cool and refreshing, though highly potent lemonade, was Hermann Hesse. Steeped in German mysticism, 
In ancient philosophy, he traveled twice to the Far East, and having expanded his awareness by ingesting on several occasions hallucinogenic masculine, Hesse, 1877 to 1962, was perhaps ideally qualified to invent a new kind of psychological novel. Gradually, he had come to rec recognize that very often despair, misery, and degeneration are simply the price we're charged for our bad attitudes and myopic vision. Once he became convinced that we humans can alter reality by altering our perceptions of it, the lid was off the picture. Hess went to his writing desk and poured the nectar. Okay, I'll stop there. The introduction. And start reading a little bit of the translator's preface. Hmm. Susan Bernofsky translated this version. Herman Hesse's Siddhartha, an Indian poem, is a novel that inhabits two distinct locations. An imagined India of the 5th and 6th century BC and a machine age Europe in which the heightened efficiency and automation of everyday life prompted a great many writers, not just Hesse, to retreat into various sorts of pastoral ideals. These modern ideals were generally set not on mountains and meadows, but in the landscapes of interior existence. Less than a generation had passed since Sigmund Freud had mapped out the contours of the human psyche, and Hess was one of the many writers of the period, among them Robert Musso, Arthur Schnitzler, Frank Wedekind, Wedekind, Wedekind. Hugo von Hofmannsthal, Robert Walser, Thomas Mann, and Franz Kafka, to devote themselves to exploring the mental and often sexual coming of age of young men in a world that took little interest in their development as individuals. Hesse began writing Siddhartha in 1919, only a year after the closing of the First World War, which had devastated Europe with unprecedented violence. This war fought with the modern machinery of airplanes, tanks, and bombs, took the lives of 8.5 million men across Europe, with a further 7.8 million missing in action. And of those who returned home, many were physically and psychologically scarred. They were scarcely, there was scarcely a family anywhere in Germany not directly impacted by this war. But before it was over, Hesse fled to neutral Switzerland where he fought bitterly against the war. Machine in an impassioned series of newspaper articles whilst undergoing psychoanalysis with the people of Carl Jung. There I'll stop.